Good day, good day, good day, good day, everybody. Thank you for joining me. Just in case you're joining me for the very first time, I am the real Brian Clays Gibbs, and this is my ministry. I talk about the good, I talk about the bad, I talk about the ugly. But listen, I utilize this platform as cautionary tale. Right now is as educational purpose to get these young kids to understand I was that test dummy. Learn from my mistake so you do not have to be that test dummy. I sacrificed my life, my freedom, being that test dummy. Listen, hit the like button, subscribe, share, support. Hey, what I'm talking about, the month of May. The month of May was not, was not, was not pleasant for Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols. Right now, the month of May was probably one of the worst months for Lorenzo Fat Cat Nichols. One year in what, May of 1987, guess what? His wife got kidnapped off the street, okay? Then right now, the following May, guess what? Somebody, King Allah, manipulate the five percenter and threw a firebomb through Fat Cat Mother House. And guess what? All hell broke loose. Right now, you got his house, his mother house burned down. His sister died in the fire. And if she was an alert, guess what? She would have died. Her husband would have died. Her, you know, saying grand, you know, saying uh, great grand, you know, saying nephew. One was four. One was ten. And his her great grand niece would have granddaughter kids would have died. And she was twelve, but she was alert. So right now it was firebombing a fat cat mother house. The past kidnap of fat cat wife Malice was still causing problems, although other believe differently. Allah just is now out of the hospital. He and his people got together late one evening and threw a firebomb through fat cat mother house and shot up her house. The firebomb only added insult to injury to fat cat. It was only a month prior that in March that King Allah and one of his crew sent a dead rat and three bullets to Mousey Long Island home. On each bullet appeared one of the fat cat kids names, Yolanda Lorenzo Jr. and the baby Lenard. Some believe that King Allah was man had manipulated Allah Justin and the rest of the five percent of their crew name into believing that I, Brian Glaze Gibb, live at Mama Home, which was a lie. The bomb had curled for several reasons. One was to kill me for supposedly killing Kayshawn. The other was that King Allah was still putting pressure on Fat Cat to prevent his wife Mousy from testifying against him for her kidnapping back in May of 1987. Around 11.30 p.m., May 20th, 1988, Allah Justice and his people circled the block several times to make sure the area wasn't hot, leaving two of his crew on the corner of 139th Street. The last time they made a rounds, one stay on the corner with his gun drawn and the other walk up the block to their car, a gray Chrysler. The car motor was running, but their light was out. Allah Justice, got out and gave a sign to a man on the corner, meaning that if anyone was to show up, then they was to be killed. The one with Allah Justice was on point. If anyone was to come out of any of the house, especially mama house, he was to shoot and kill them. Then Allah Justice threw a cocktail bomb into mama house. The fire bomb from the cocktail bomb hit the living room curtain, sending them into flame. With the fire spreading quickly, I think Allah just then spotted someone trying to put out the fire because he ordered his man to start shooting. Mama House is immediately splattered with 9 millimeter bullet. Allah just got back into his car and back out of the block as a gunman walked to the corner to take out any witness, but there wasn't. Mama had fallen asleep while watching television when a bomb crashed through the living room window, waking her up. The fire spread quickly throughout the three-story house. And once Mama realized she couldn't stop it, she first went to the back of the house, to the master bedroom, and woke up her husband, Amos. Daddy Amos Coleman was 75 years old at the time. Mama and Daddy Amos then went upstairs and woke up the grandchildren, Tamika, who was 12, Juanel, who was 10, and Turtle, who was 4. All of them was gathered from their bedroom, and Mama told Daddy Amos to take them out of the house to safety. Wynell was the only one of the grandchildren who was badly burned. He stayed in the hospital and ended up having them say several skin grafts. Mama perceived upstairs to the third level and tried to get her daughter Mary out of the house. Mary's confined to a wheelchair as a result of a stroke she suffered about six years earlier. Folks, listen. Look what happened. Okay, what happened was this, man. May was a bad month for Fat Cat Organization because once again, like I say, May 1987, Memorial Day weekend, his wife was kidnapped. May 1988, these cartoon characters, the late King Allah, manipulated Allah Justice 
You know what I'm saying? And no guys, the five percent of he manipulate them. Say, listen, y'all want Glaze, I want Fat Cat. Glaze live up this address. So they gave him mama address, you know what I'm saying, South on Zone, Queens. I didn't live there. But the crazy part about that, probably like, I don't know, 10, 15, 30 minutes before that, I left. I was at the house talking to mama, fat cat mother. We was out there downstairs in the room and I'm talking to her. You know what I'm saying? Long story short, I gave her a hug, gave her a kiss, and I left. She said what she did was she fell asleep on a couch. So right now, by her falling asleep on the couch, probably saved each and every one of them on there. Because once again, she said she woke up to the flame. And what she tried to do, she tried to get up. Sit back and think about it. Mama's a little short little thing. Probably like, what, four or nine. Short little thing. So she called herself feisty. Try to put the fire out. You know what I'm saying? Right now, once she see, she just turned 70 years old. She tried to put the fire. She couldn't put the fire out. So once again, like I said, right now, guess what? She alert everybody to get the heck out of that house. And what I'm saying like this, folks, look what happened, man. You know what? Here it is right now. One crime turned into another crime turned into another crime. You know what? When people's out there, like you got a guy like King Allah, highly intelligent, manipulate these 5% of them that I was beefing with. And while we was beefing, because they killed and robbed some of my friends, and right now, guess what? I'm coming after them. And right now, was guess what? He like, look, y'all want Glaze. I want Cat. Glaze live at this address. I didn't live there. But it didn't matter to them. They felt right now, y'all can't find him in Brooklyn because he in Queens. He making all that money now he's living in Queens. But it was a lie. I was in there. Yet in still regards to what? How many innocent people lost their life over a lie? How many innocent people lost their life? Not because of something that they did, but because something that their son, their, their husband, their brother, their family member, something that they did because they into that street life. They're hustling and bustling. They committing crime. They doing everything in their life from A to Z, but not wondering or, or, or wise enough to think, guess what? It's going to affect their loved one. So once again, like I say, in this particular story right here, listen, get it. In the Beyond Lucky book, the Brian Glaze gift story, a true story of crack money, murder, redemption. Like I said right now was, I was once the problem, now I'm seeking to be a part of the solution. So hit the like button, subscribe, share, order your signed copy by emailing me. Brian, B-R-I-A-N, gifts, G-I-B-B-S, 1201 at yahoo.com. Listen, there's no shortcut in life. And only thing come fast is trouble. You know what I'm saying? Easy to get into, hard to get out. One love.